Hey guys, it's Casey. I'm sorry I wasn't here for you for, uh, for a video yesterday. I got kind of busy. I was slammed with stuff for college and some side projects. Uh, but I'm going to go over the blue cards and probably go over uh, the black cards as well today because I have I want to get all that done and I want to get this done by Friday by Friday because I'm going to two to three pre-releases this weekend because I love this set that much and I just have a ball. Uh, first card is Aqua Steve. Uh, target creature get minus two, minus zero for pay three mana and tap it. Uh, this card, it's four mana for one three, which is not good at all. Uh, and also the ability is something that the opponent can play around, so it's not that it's not good either. So my evaluation for this card is don't take it because it's an uncommon. It's like a 23rd card you take because you don't have any other things to play in your blue deck. Which is highly unlikely so probably not ever going to play this card. Okay. Uh, we have Luster Squall. Uh, pay 1 blue, instant speed, tap target creature you don't control, and no reload for 4. Uh, this looks like, for me, I would use this card as a bad version of Sleep. Uh, because, actually no, I wouldn't, not a bad version of Sleep, it's basically Sleep without the double blue requirements, basically, because you, you tap it on their turn, and then stop the attack, and then you can bash in on your turn, and you're good. The only thing between Sleep and Bluster Squall is the fact that Sleep was an instant speed, but Sleep gave you another attack step, which in turn makes it better. But I like the fact that you can tap it for one blue, you can pay one blue or four mana for it. So this card is pretty high pick in my opinion, uh, and I'm probably going to play it in some decks. Uh, Chronic Flooding. Chant land becomes tapped, its controller puts three lands into play on, in, or from his library into his graveyard. Uh, this set, for some reason, has a sub mill plan with the defenders uh, and the chronic floodings and some other cards that I can't think of right now. Uh, overall, uh, this card is not good. It's something you're going to have played against you a lot because people want to have that mill win. And I'm sure that if I get past every single mill card, I still would not play this card. But, you know, but I, it's something that if you get like multiples of, uh, it might be good uh, later on, but I don't think, so. I, don't, I doubt it. Uh, next card. The cancel is back. Uh, cancel's been in the format forever and a half. And it's, it was out of, and it's still in standard. Uh, this is probably like the second best counter magic spell in standard right now. It's either, it's either dissipate or cancel. Those two are like the best, in my opinion, because of the fact that they have they are they don't have a weird like they pay this much mana or they do this something else or they have to sacrifice the creature or, or some really weird clause that makes them. Their spell not counterable, and plus it's a three mana drop, and any counter spell that costs like five or something is just not playable. Um, yeah, I like. I I'll probably play. I'll probably play this card. I might if it's a if I'm drafting a blue red deck, blue black, some some color combination of blue with some splashing or something. Uh, I'll play this as like a fifth pick if it's actually that good. And, and plus, it's a really good counter spell in the format because I've been looking at the cards and I'm trying to get a judge of how fast it is because I'm tired of the fast formats from Innistrad to M12. M13 was not as bad because you had to play stuff like these, the 5 6 Sphinx, the Factor Fiction Sphinx. Um, I love that card and I can't remember the name. Um, but you play this card. Leap three mana up, like maybe you have the Aquas Steed, but you can play, the, you can have that in play and have counter spell in your hand or cancel in your hand, and you just blow them out when they play, try and play like a fireball or just 
a really big spell that would change the game in their favor so much that you can't win, and you just go, nah, you don't get it. So I'm excited about Cancel. This time around I am. Uh, conjured Currency. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may exchange control of Conjured Currency and target permanent you neither own nor control. So... Oops, hey, let me fix this. I'm sorry! Uh, either... So you get their guy, and, th and they get the enchantment, and then they get your stuff, but not the stuff, you, not the thing you took. For six mana, this is not something I would play. EDH is kind of interesting because you go, okay, I want this part, so because I can set up my combo with it, or I can take your effect that you have and then make it mine. So EDH, it's okay, and standard, it's not going to do anything, also for the other constructed formats. And for limited, I would not play it unless they had some big bomb and you have a bunch of like, cantrip spells. Anyways, Crosstown Courier, uh, whenever it deals damage, they mill that much. Uh, this card is the exact opposite of what the mill deck wants in this format. Um, you want to be able to defend yourself forever and just play spells to mill them or like have them tap the lands to mill them if you even have that card. Um, but this card is an aggressive creature and that's something you don't want because it, plus it, it, it trades those tokens with 1-1s one and that's not good either even though it's a 2 mana 2-1 two for blue which is kind of overpowered a little bit for blue creatures. Um, it's not something you want in the blue mill deck. Dispel, Dispel is back in the format. Uh, counter target instant spell. Uh, the last time it was in the format was in Zend Zendikar, if I remember correctly. Um, that, not Zendikar, Woodwake. Sorry. Woodwake. Um, it's, this spell is going to be good this time around. There's a lot of instant speed removal and a lot of, uh, the overload cards actually do have instant speed and removal spells. So this is a good sideboard card. Uh, Cyclonic Rift. This card I'm excited about mainly for the 7 mana cost because you get to you get to Devastation Tide their their side of the board and then you get to bash in for a ton and they have to invest their next like 3 to 4 turns playing all their stuff out again. It's, it's and the fact that they uh, they disperse as well for early game is awesome. But the, it, I would just really wish I had an Isaac Chronic to play this card with. But other than that, I'm fine with it. Doorkeeper. Um, for some reason I saw him. He looked like a um, a gremlin. He reminded me of a gremlin for a second there. Uh, he's just chilling with a spear at the door. Uh, but he's a zero board defender for two mana, which is really good uh, for the blue mill deck. And if we have the defender deck, which is for some reason they have the defender theme, one for each color, um, you get to mill them for a crap ton. Uh, this card is good. I would take it probably about 8th pick, ninth pick, don't quote me on this, but that's my opinion with this, with this set so far. Yeah, so I'm, I'm okay with this. Downsize. Uh, 1 mana to tar to nerf 1 creature, basically it's worse than Hydra Surge, or you can overload it and it becomes a Hysterical Blindness for Innistrad, which is an unplayable card. So, yeah, don't play this card. Hover Barrier, 3 mana, 0, 6 with Defender and Flying. Holy crap, the thing's big. <laughs> because you get to, you, as the blue deck, you want to buy time. You play this card, and you literally just sit there for possibly 4 turns. You could sit around for 4 turns with this card in play and just block things and, and nerf and and stem the tide of creatures that it's attacking you. Just 
block the biggest one and take maybe one to two points of damage. If you don't, if this is your only creature in play, and since you're a blue deck, that might be the case. But other, but doubt it. You might have other defenders. Maybe you have that zero four defender that mills with this card. Basically, if you have those two in play, you basically don't take damage for the next like five turns, and you get to just draw and have your hand full of stuff while you're milling them out, which is amazing. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this card. Very imposter. Interest about you would sacrifice it unless you return another creature you can hold your owner's hand. It's a 2 1 flying for 1. Uh, this card, I wouldn't play it because it has the clause of. Uh, you have to bounce a creature to your hand, and it's a 1 mana. So you're not playing this on turn 1. You're just not. Um, and by the time you have a creature out that you want to bounce to your hand and then play it, your opponent has a flyer that has at least one power and will just trade with this or just block it and kill it. So this card, people will overvalue it because it's a two mana, a one mana two one flyer, but that's the only reason it's going to be played. And if you're going to they're going to play it and they're going to feel bad after they play it because they have to bounce one of their guys for a one mana creature. Uh, in action Junction, a sorcery speed detain target creature, draw a card, cantrips. Uh, the only reason you'd play this card is because of cantrips. Because the detain ability, like I said in the other video, it's not de it's not a good ability. It lets you attack for a turn and then they don't, have, they don't attack back. Congratulations, you got to do this. Uh, but I'll play, I would play this as a like 21st card just to kind of slow, it down, slow down an opponent's deck, but about it. Uh, moving on. Inspiration. Divination at instant speed for one more mana. Uh, this card, uh, I, kind of, I like this card a lot, but that's because I like to play control decks where you get to just draw cards on their turn, like with Think Twice. And I love Think Twice a lot. And this card is... Overall, one mana less, but you don't have, but you don't get to do it in turn three and four, or two, turn two and three. Oh, excuse me. Um, uh, you get to divination and speed. I mean, generally, I like that card. Um, so I would, I would play this card. I would take it high, uh, probably about mid range pick, like maybe a six. Seventh pick, I would take this card in the first pack. It's pretty good. Uh, just something else for you to do. And then Jace, the Architect of Thought, comes in with four loyalty counters and four mana cost. Planeswalker. First off, that's really good. Then you get tick him up. He goes to five, basically the five loyalty at four mana. Usually, Planeswalkers have less loyalty than their mana cost, even after they plus. And if they plus, usually they have average. That's why Johnny, the Ajani is so good because, or the Ajani was really good because it started with five loyalty for three mana. That's really good, and it costs three mana. This one, however, not as good as the Johnny, not nearly as good as the other Jace. More constructive playable than the other Jace, but uh, this one, uh, you're going to use the plus one a lot, but you're going to use the minus two even more because you like to draw cards, and your opponent, the only reason, I wish it was five cards, I wish it was a three factor fiction, because, I don't know, I'm me, and I love drawing cards, and you're, my opponent just scooping because they can't beat the factor fiction. Um, and the minus eight... This card's more for EDH style decks, but for limited, if you ever get this card that you'll point off, you basically just, your opponent just scoops because they can't beat their own card. They can't beat their best card that they have. Uh, but this card is, I like it because you get to defend when you plus one and you don't, you basically, all your guys get nerfed, all their guys get nerfed. And I, I enjoy it. Okay. Uh, Isperia's Skywatch, a 6 mana 3 3 flying and it enters the battlefield to detain the creature. 
Uh, once again, the detainability, I don't, I'm not flattered by it at all. But I like this card because it's a 3-3 flyer. And you can, if you need to have more creatures, you could possibly splash this in a green-white deck. You know, just to help with the mana base a little bit. Uh, other than that, I would play this card. Uh, but I do like flyers, and flyers are good. Museum skin, one mana, save a creature from rune spell, and then overload. Uh, I don't see myself ever o overloading this creature. Um, it's like they, the only thing a way I can see this happening is if you they use a removal a, a removal spell, and then overload it to copy it for each creature. So this is like a sideboard card against overload. Uh, next card, the Paralyzing Grasp. Okay, uh, that was my roommate. Uh, this is David. Uh, Paralyzing Grasp, uh, there's a reprint. Uh, this card, I don't... It, it basically encrusted without the artifact clause on it. And that makes... I don't enjoy this card that much because... Um, you have to have them attack you for it to apply. Uh, so other than that, I I would never I wouldn't play this card really, um, unless you like you're like desperately need removal in your blue red deck. Okay. Uh, Rune Wing, flying two two four mana dies draw card. Uh, I enjoy cards like this. I like the um, stuff like Oculus from Mirrored and Besieged was was play, was played. I like to play that card. Um, and this one is just a much better Oculus. Double the cost, but he gets double the power and toughness, and also that's flying. Uh, but this one, yeah, I'd put it. I wouldn't first pick it, but it's really close to being at that power level to first pick or second pick it. Okay. Uh, Psychic Spiral, shuffle all cards from your graveyard to your library, then put that many cards from the top of your. Uh, then target player, then your opponent mills that much. Uh, this card's interesting if you have the mill strategy because this is just a win condition. Or it could be sideboard tech against the mill deck. And it's like, okay, Amelia, okay, you do it too. And then I get my stuff back. And I get to shuffle my. This, then I get to shuffle back. Okay. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't play this card. Search the city, and uh, 5 mana enchantment that. Uh, in limited, it's not playable because of the fact that you have to have multiple copies of each card. Uh, this is even in standard constructed, you're not going to play this card because you have to exile cards with it for it to work. You need to cast, you need to play the cards that you're exiled off top. Um, there's going to be a, the people that people that you know that are not that good. They're that. Um, the kitchen table stuff. Uh, they're gonna try and make this card work, but then they're gonna be sad when it doesn't work at all. And they're gonna wonder why it's not working. Uh, Skyline Predator, 3 4 Flying Flash for a 6 mana. Uh, this card's really good for limited format because of the fact it's just so big and it has flash. Uh, also, 6 mana is a lot to have uh, to leave open when you have a 3 4. Like, um, it's harder to, it's easier to leave up 6 mana than it is to leave up like 4 mana for the uh, Skyline Predator in Dark Ascension. Because there's much more you could do for 6 mana at instant speed than you can at 3 or 4 mana. Uh, Sphinx of the Chimes, 6 mana, 5, 6, flying. Uh, this card, uh, you'd play mainly for the body and not for the ability. Uh, a blue card having flying and basically being on par with green cards for mana cost of power is really good. And like and just evasion is just overpowered. Uh, if you have this card and you have like excess amount of lands, then it's really amazing. But other than that, it's just a big flyer, a big fatty that I would play. You still first pick this card. 
Sell one spirit, two one to block over for four mana that detains a creature. Uh, this card, the only reason you play this card is because it's unblockable, and you, if you for some reason are playing blue, black, green, you can play this card and scavenge and put counters on it, counters on it. Other than that, this card is not that great. Uh, the one toughness does not really apply to unblockable creatures, but um, this, uh, I wouldn't first pick this card. It's not. I'm not excited to see this card, but. I probably take this card if I'm if I need ways to damage to get through. Steal of Secrets, two mana or three mana two two that deals damage to a player. They draw do uh, common damage to a player. Draw a card. I enjoy this card. I enjoy cards that like uh, Scroll Thief uh, that when they do damage draw a card. But I like Scroll Thief better because it's a one three and blue decks are more defensive. Excuse me than anything else. And this card's more aggressive. But I like this card. I would I would take this card if there's if there's nothing else in the pack. Uh, Syncopate. Uh, don't mana into a counter spell, and if it, you actually do counter the spell, it's exiled instead. Uh, I don't I don't see this card being played and constructed. I might be wrong. And for limited, this card is it's something that you would be played against you, and you'd feel bad. And then you realize they dump their, they wait, they skip their entire turn, and counted one of your spells for like all of their mana, and you just play something else, and they'll feel bad. So I wouldn't. So this card you're gonna be play. It's gonna be played a lot earlier in the form whenever the Addison is or Addison Raptica is still new, but after that you're gonna see it played less and less as people learn that the card is not that that good. Void Wheeler, 1-4 for 5 mana, and when it enters the battlefield, bounce starter creature uh, to its own hand. Um, it's a UMA effect too, which I do enjoy more than Aether Adept, because Aether Adept, you played it, you have to bounce something, and you could, if you didn't have anything else on, on their field, you could just, they'd have, you'd have to bounce one of your own guys. But this one, you can play it as a defensive what, creature, like if they don't have a board, and you just like have like like one creature, you just play that as a defensive thing, and just block forever. So I like it better than Aether Adept in that way, but the fact that it costs 5 mana to have that effect, and just a 1-4, uh, takes away from that. Okay, Tower Drake, uh, flying 2-1 for 3, that pay one, color, 1 white, and it gets plus 0, plus 1. Um, this card is okay, it's an aggressive blue flyer, not as good as Welkin Turn, because Welkin Turn was really under-costed. Uh, I like this card, uh, because it can block if you have enough white mana, but the fact that you have to have a bunch of white mana to, to, for this card to be really good, uh, takes away from the fact that you would play this card. But I would play it, uh, if I have a lack of creatures, I would take this card. Uh, no problem. Okay. Now we're going to go on to the black cards, and I'll be right back. And black cards. Uh, this is Assassin's Strike, Distort Her Creature, to control, control the Discredit card. Uh, for 6 mana, it's kind of overcosted, but it's, I like the uh, no claws destroy creature effects. Uh, especially in a slower format like this. Uh, the Discredit card uh, part uh, is not going to be as useful as you think it would be. It's going to make people want to save their removal spell more, but really it's best just to get what you need out of the way before anything else happens. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Catacomb Slug, uh, 5 minutes 2 6. Uh, this card's uh, an aggressive deck. This card uh, is not that good. Uh, I wouldn't. It's like uh, the Guardian Lions. Just one more power. Uh, this card, not that great, it's not exciting, but it's a card that I would not, that... It blocks a lot of the stuff that the Rakdos and Golgari thing, creatures are, and it doesn't kill the Golgari creatures uh, that much. That way they don't get their scavenge. So this card is not as bad as it looks like, but it's still, I wouldn't highly, I wouldn't pick it highly. Uh, Decker Drone Imp, Flying Lifelink. This is basically Vault Scourge without the Phyrexian mana cost, so you can't play it on turn one. And, uh, 
it's just not good because it just doesn't have a value to it, and if it if it was a way to pump it, like if you were to dump two mana to give it plus one plus zero, then it might be playable. But still, it's it's not good enough. Uh, cremate, so one mana cantrips that also gets rid of something that has scavenge. Uh, this card's actually pretty good for a sideboard tech. It might also see standard play because of the infant speed part of it. It also just costs one mana and it draws you a card. So basically it's like pro, uh, Jutaxian Probe. Uh, or not Jutaxian Probe, it's a Surgical Extraction without paying life, but you also draw a card from it. Because basically you use Probe to get rid of just one card. Uh, Dark Revenant. Four mana, two, two flyer that dies, you put it on top of your library. I don't like this card because of the fact that your opponent can just keep killing it and you just keep drawing it and you don't want to play it because you don't want it to die again. But earlier in the game, uh, you want this, you would like this card because it's very re resistant to removal and it chump blocks forever. Uh, but this card, it, it's pretty good. It's not astounding. It's not amazing by any means, but it's something I would, I would not, I would play it. I can see playing this card about fifth pick. Dead Reveler. This is probably the most powerful uh, card I've seen so far for black because of the fact it's a 3 mana 3-4. Three, it can't block but it's a 3-4 so you're going to be attacking with it on turn 4. Uh, this card's really good and it's like, like I said one of the most aggressive cards that I've seen so far and I'm just excited to play it. Uh, next is Destroy the Evidence, Destroy Target Land and Controller. Reveals the top cards from the library until it reveals a land card, then puts those cards in the graveyard. So basically you get two lands, and maybe, maybe something else. But, uh, the only reason I would play this card is because, uh, if they have, like, the, uh, Phyrexian, uh, arena. Uh, excuse me, Phyrexian arena, uh, land enchantment. Uh, then I would use this to get rid of it, but other than that, uh, I wouldn't play this card. Even for the mill. Desecration Demon. He is a big, big flyer for 4 mana. This rem this is almost, in my opinion, it's really overpowered. Like, this is like one of the most powerful creatures I've seen before. In this set. Because of the... F even though it, your opponent can sack it off on your turn, and their turn, that way they can just get damage in. But if if they had trample, this card would be mythic rare and be insane because of the fact it can't be chump block. But the fact that it doesn't have trample, it can't be chump block. That's the only reason this card's uh, not as good as it should be. But it feels like this card should have trample because it just gets so big if you're not careful with it. Um. I'm in, I, I'm trying to make a deck actually that is running like two or three copies of this card because I like this card so much and it's really good. It's an early game drop that will just change the way the game is going instantaneously. But I first just picked this card. Oh yeah, and constructed. Uh, I can. There's probably going to be a couple control decks that run it. Uh, the aggressive decks I would not. I don't think they play it. They have some. They have other things to do on, on with four mana, but yeah, they use this card quite a lot. Uh, Divine Glee. Uh, this looks like the weirdest. It looks like the original um, Alice in Wonderland. Like, like the original way that it was described. This is has like the feel of Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> but the, talking about the actual card, uh, this card is a dark favor that does not go well with itself. Um, do you have to pay mana for the uh, trample? There's not a tormented soul. There's not. There's only like one unblockable creature. And it's a two-one, uh, and it costs four mana. 
So this card, I don't, it's not going to do a lot. It doesn't extend your board state. You don't get to fireball anything when you attack. It doesn't do anything relevant. Um, so yeah, nothing exciting next card. But Uh, Drain Pipe Vermin, uh, one mana, one mon. I wish this card would just be Ravenous Rats. That way you don't have to pay, you don't have to hold up the mana for this card to die. It could be so much better if it was just die, stay this card a card. Um, I just, it's just not my, my thing. Uh, Grim Roused About, uh, two mana, two two unleash that regenerates for two. Uh, this card is basically mana skeleton with no haste, or it could be a two-two that can't block, and when it that does that when it trades, you have to pay two mana to regenerate it, or just lose a guy that you invested so much into already. This card, this card isn't powerful enough to be in aggressive decks, and it's also it also doesn't block well enough to be in the defensive get deck. So this card is like a twenty-third card that you just need features. Great Betrayal, 5, 7 mana enchantment, when a creature you control, you don't control dies, return it to the battlefield under your control with an additional woman counter on it at the beginning of the next end step. That creature has, is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. Uh, this card you would play at EDH deck, mainly because there's so many different powerful effects like Wrath, um, Wrath of God, Damnation, Planar Cleansing, uh, just to get, just, and just to, like, if you play this card, and then you Wrath, you get everyone's creatures back. And they're all stronger, and they're all zombies, and they're all yours. A uh, launch party. This reminds me of Goblin Grenade. Because of the humor. Uh, but this card is... Uh, destroying your creature, it's control loses two life for four mana at instant speed. Uh, this is like a re in response to them having a removal spell on your creature, you just play this card. Or, it could be like Fling, that's what it reminds me of too, like you take their guy somehow, and then you fling it right back at them. So basically, Active Trees and then Fling. But this card, this card's a little bit worse than that. Uh, other than that, it's, it, it's okay. It's not the best thing I've seen, but it's, it's not the worst. Mind Rot, target play, we, are, we all know what Mind Rot does. Uh, this card is going to be really powerful in this set because a lot of the cards cost a lot of mana, and it's going to be a, a very a slower format than than uh, Abyssin Restored was. And having discard spells on like turn five when you play them and make them discard two of their spells, usually it's like a really big effect and because they have like their game winning synergies or their or their like mid range stuff, which is still pretty powerful. So you're gonna get Nelio this card in this four, in this set. Ogre Jailbreaker, it's a four mana four four. So that for a black creature, that's really good. But it has Defender, but it can attack as long as it didn't have a Defender, as long as it control a gate. Now the thing about this card is that I noticed it that if uh, if you play a gate, it doesn't lose Defender. It keeps the Defender pack. Part. So that way the defender deck, you know, the mill, add mana, whatever you need to do, kind of the shenanigans of the defender deck, uh, you can use this card, and it still counts as a defender, but it can still attack. So that's the only reason I think this card is playable, even if, if you have the blue-black, like, defender deck. Other than that, the card's oh, it's okay for a 4 mana 4-4 four four that blocks really well, and it trades with, like, everything. That's okay, it's not it's not the best thing I've seen, but it's certainly not the worst. This is like a I'd say it's like a fourth like a uh, not fourth pick, but a sixth pick. Acropolis Reagent or Re Regent. Regent? There we go. Acropolis Regent, sorry. Uh six point out of five five vampire that when a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, but that means you won't count as well. Um basically it's just another bomb. Thing. It's gonna be played against you, and you're just gonna be like, "Oh, derp, would you derp? I lose." Well, look at that, because you can't kill it. And if it swings once, you just die, because it attacks. You get six counters. Attacks is twelve counters, and you attack against twenty-four counters. Uh, but 
it's a very unexciting card. Uh, Pack Rats, I've had mixed feelings with this card because of the uh, different effect, but if you, but it's okay. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't slam windmill this card, but it's a card I would definitely like to try out. Um, if, we, if we have a rat EH deck, do you just play this card? Uh, other than that, not much, not, nothing exciting, but it's, eh, whatever. Parallel Shadow is 0-4 for 4 mana that pumps for 2 each each time you pay 2 mana. Uh, this card's actually pretty good because of the fact that it can block a, a lot of creatures on the ground. And then you can actually attack with it, and you either can choose not to... You can either choose to do something else on your turn, or pay plump, or pump mana into it, and have it either kill a guy, or get damage through. So, this card, I'm excited about this card. Shaking Affliction. Whenever each at the beginning of each opponent's up, that player lose has one or few cards in hand. He loses three life. Uh, this card I do not think would be good at all, except for like some really weird modern or legacy deck. But in standard and limited, this card you just should you should just not play it. Sewer Shambler, uh, two, 3 mana 2 1 Swamp Walk with Scavenge for 3. Uh, the Scavenge ability is the only, the only reason this card is playable. But 3 mana 2 1 is okay. It's not the worst thing, it's not the best thing. But it has value for trading later. And it, or trading early, getting their creature out of the way. And then just paying 3 mana to give it another guy a plus 2 plus 2. Uh, yeah, but uh, no, I like this card. Uh, Slum Reaper, this is basically Grim, or not Grim, but <laughs> this is basically, um, oh wow, I just forgot the name. Uh, the card from, uh, Shards of Alara, of the Flashback Marauder, there we go. The, this costs one more mana, but it has uh, one more power and toughness, and it has the same effect. So plus peg Marauder with a 3-1 for 3-1 th for 3, this is a 4-2 for 4, and it has the same ability. Uh, I like this card. Uh, I would I would play it because it trades with a lot of things. And it uh, also gets rid of a creature if they if they if they have like just one creature, but it's a creature that you don't have a removal spell for or you can't kill, you need to play this and trade a 4-2 for an 8-8. Which I'm okay with. I would do that. So it's okay. I I would play the card. I wouldn't first pick a card, but it'd be like a high pick for me. Uh, Stab Wound, it's minus two, minus two for three mana, which is not the best thing, but it's a removal spell, so it's always going to be good. And also, if you put it on a big creature, it has the additional bonus of, first off, it makes it smaller, and then at the beginning of each upkeep, uh, it gets your control loses two life. So it's something that you put it on their defender creature, they basically just can't get rid of it. And it and it just sits there and they just lose life. They have a 10 turn clock. Terrace Worm, uh, 7 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Uh, not exciting because there's so many things you can do on 7 mana that is much better than playing a vanilla 5-5. Five, five. The Scavenge makes this card slightly better, so but I would discard this card early instead, instead of actually casting a creature. Tavern Swindler, the 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. That's the only reason I play this card. The fact you have flip a coin for this card to actually do anything relevant. Um, just the randomness is not going to be good in limited or any format whatsoever. Throw Kill Assassin, the 2 mana 1-2 with Death Touch and Unleash. Uh, the Unleash and Death Touch part kind of go against itself because with you, when you have a Death Touch creature that has more toughness and power, like a Deadly Recruits, you want it to be able to block and trade with something instead of it attacking into something and trade with a 3-1. You want to be able to kill a 5-5 five five with this thing. Um, but you just if you unleash it, you're going to be stuck with uh, just a 2-3 that gets killed by basically anything that you don't want. Uh, ultimate Price. This card's a removal spell that is going to be like Doom. It's like, it's uh, go for the throat on the rarity. 
and, and go for the throat, printed it in the set that it was printed in, it's going to do the exact same thing for ultimate price. It's going to make it so that you don't want to take it first pick, but you don't. But it's going to be go highly anyways because it's a removal spell for two mana. But it's, it's not Doom Blade. There's not going to be a removal spell that's not Doom Blade. It's going to be Doom Blade and be better. You're not going to play a, put a two mana black colorless spell that says destroy target creature. That's just too good. Uh, Zinkev Locus, uh, they 6 mana 3 3 with Scavenge. Uh, the fact that this has 3 power on it for a 6 mana flyer, I like flyers, and the fact that this can trade with something and then you get value off of it makes it so much better than the blue card, the blue creature. Uh, the, I forgot the name of it, uh, but it's, it's gonna be a really high pick for me and it's, it's a little card that I like a lot. Underworld Connection to 3 mana. It's basically Phyrexian Arena on a land. I don't like this card. The only reason I don't like this card is because of the fact that you take you have to use the mana that... So you don't play this on turn 3. But you play this maybe turn like 4 or 5 when you need to start drawing cards. And you are either getting like land screwed. You can just use this card to draw the lands and call the cards you need. Uh, I like this card, other than that, uh, but I'll be looking forward, I'm sure this card will be played. More like a 2 of, but it's not going to be like a deck mirror on this card. Uh, okay, that's it for the black cards and the blue cards. Uh, thanks for watching, sorry about missing yesterday, and I'll see you guys later.